Hello NBA fans, and welcome to the 15th episode of the NBA, the week that was. This past week had some great changes in the standings, including some big jumps and even bigger falls. Overall, it was another amazing week of regular season basketball. There's just a month left for the playoffs, and I hope you guys, like me, cannot wait. Without further ado, let's begin the newest episode of the NBA, the week that was. It was a rematch between the Hawks and the Bulls in Chicago on Sunday. The Hawks took the game 123-118. to The game was in the Hawks' hands throughout the first half, but then something happened, which made me lose the little respect I had left for NBA referees. It was midway through the third quarter. Trey Young dribbles up the floor and steps into a 30-foot bomb and, of course, drains it. Then he simply looks in the direction of Chris Dunn, doesn't say a word, and starts walking away. And then he was ejected. I was at the game in the stadium, and I was livid. How do you eject someone for looking at them? NBA fans around the world were horrified and mad about this call. The Hawks were forced to play most of the second half without Trey, John Collins, who was out due to illness, and Torian Prince, who was out for the birth of his child. Alex Lenz stood up in their absence and finished the game with 28 points and 9 rebounds along with 5 three-pointers made. Sometimes I really question what the refs think about when they make these horrid calls. Looking at someone is not worthy of any call whatsoever. It enrages me when the refs make these calls and I hope the NBA does something about all the missed calls that have happened this year. In an outcome that no one foresaw, the Phoenix Suns somehow defeated the Milwaukee Bucks 114-105. to In another crazy stat, the only team that has beaten the Bucks twice this year has been the Suns, one of the worst teams in the league. This loss for the Bucks was also the first time they have lost back-to-back games this year. Kelly Oubre Jr. stepped up with 27 points and 13 rebounds to counter Giannis Antetokounmpo's 21 points, 13 rebounds, and 6 assists. I haven't spoken too much about the Suns this year, so let's just do that. Devin Booker has been leading this unexperienced yet promising squad for the past two seasons, and this year he found a running mate in rookie first round pick, first pick in the draft, DeAndre Aiden. He's a center. He has been your typical rookie center, figuring things out as the season goes along while polishing his game at the same time. They also found a gem in rookie wing Mikhail Bridges. His 3 and D ability from college is being showcased each and every game on the big stage. Phoenix needs to improve on something really important to fully unlock the potential that they have. They need a point guard. Since Eric Bledsoe was traded to Milwaukee, the Suns haven't found the primary playmaking passer they need. The solution to that is drafting John Morant. If they get the first or second pick, Morant is a point guard who is drawing comparisons to Russell Westbrook, just with better shooting. Pairing Morant with Booker will create a deadly backcourt that will torch the NBA for years to come. The disorganized Boston Celtics assembled together when it mattered most and proved themselves yet again as contenders by defeating the Golden State Warriors 128-95. to Gordon Hayward had one of the best games of his season so far by scoring 30 points and 7 rebounds and 4 assists off the bench. The Celtics took a 25-point lead at halftime and never took their foot off the accelerator. If the Celtics continue to perform like this night in and night out, not a single person in the NBA would doubt them as contenders. However, their locker room and chemistry issues have gotten onto the court and into the minds of the fans. Most fans, including me, don't believe this Celtics team has the ability to do this on a nightly basis. They have the roster. They have the players. They just don't have the will. I said the same thing last week, and this week they came and proved me wrong. But can that happen in every game that is important to them? Or will their mind problems get the better of them? The red-hot Utah Jazz defeated the lowly New Orleans Pelicans 114-104. to Rudy Gobert had himself a night with 22 points, 13 rebounds, and 4 blocks. The Pelicans have been a big-time mess since the Anthony Davis saga, so I'll talk about the Jazz. After a very slow start to the season, 
the Jazz look like a completely different team since January. Their pass-first offensive mindset and their ability to switch on defense has been a joy to watch as a basketball connoisseur. Donovan Mitchell continues to show his greatness from his rookie year as the primary scoring option for the Jazz. Having said that, Joe Ingles is the real key to the Jazz team. His versatility and energy is the power for the Jazz whenever he is on the floor, and he has been playing really well this year. He is shooting the ball well, he has been passing at a great level for a small forward, he has also played great defense whenever required. Overall, this Jazz team is here to make a stand, and I truly believe they can challenge the Warriors or Nuggets in a 7 game series. The Thunder defeated the Blazers in a high scoring battle between two Western Conference powerhouses, 129 to 121. Damian Lillard's 51 points were combated by a 37 point outing by Russell Westbrook and a 32 point 14 rebound night from Paul George. Despite this loss, the Blazers continue to show their consistency as a strong playoff team and they hope to make it out of the West as the team to beat. The backcourt of Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum continue to torch defenses with their crazy soaring abilities. But I believe the one place with the, that the Blazers can improve is the wing. I believe that if they can acquire a great 3 and D small forward, such as Robert Covington or Torian Prince, that will bring this team to the top and that will enable them to achieve their dreams of winning an NBA championship. The streaking Houston Rockets pulled out a comfortable win against the star-filled Philadelphia 76ers, 107-91. James Harden's 31 points, 10 rebounds, and 7 assists helped Houston continue their 7-game win streak. They also have taken the 3rd spot in a tight Western Conference playoff race. The Rockets currently sit at 40 wins and 25 losses. It's so hard to imagine that this team was at 11 wins and 14 losses and in 14th place in the Western Conference when Chris Paul got hurt. That's when the Harden show began. He has led this team with his offensive masterpieces to where they are now and he does not seem like he will stop. The Rockets have figured out how to get the most out of both Chris Paul and Harden. They both start the game, but Chris is quickly subbed out. That's when Harden comes out halfway through the first quarter when Chris Paul leads the bench mob against their foes. When Harden's on the floor, it's pure isolation basketball. When Chris is on the floor, it's beautiful ball movement to an open three. Even though they don't play together as much, they have been successful and they hope to continue their success until they have a ring on their fingers. The Lakers just couldn't stop the bleeding and took yet another loss, this time to the Boston Celtics. The final score was 120 to 107. The Lake Show still couldn't get a win despite King James's 30 points, 10 rebounds, and 12 assists. Unfortunately for the Lakers, anything that could have gone wrong for them went wrong. Their veterans didn't step up. The injuries took out their best players, and the Davis trade saga sapped up the will they had left. Now LeBron is on a minutes restriction. Lonzo is out for the rest of the year with ankle issues. Brandon Ingram has suffered an unfortunate blood clot and could be out for quite a while, and Kyle Kuzma has missed some games with ankle problems as well. The playoffs are out of the picture for the Lakers, and that saddens my heart. Well, that's all I have, I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and your NBA knowledge increases as you listen to more and more of my episodes. Just as a heads up, there will be 4-5 to five more regular season episodes, and when the playoffs begin, my upload schedule might change to accommodate all of the entertaining playoff games being played. Catch you next week. See ya!